all right so i welcome you all into this dilbumi session uh, in the last session we talked about the what we actually talked about in the last session deployment yes we talked about the packaging the process and deploying the process right and when we package the process you know right many other dependent components are also packaged along with that uh packaging process and then we do the deployment right for any deployment to happen what do what do need what do we need to have we need to have an environment right yeah. and there must be some yeah. runtime attached to it right yeah but here i have a quick note the note is this is a trick question we can do deployment to an environment without runtime also this is important so what i'm saying is we can do deployment on an environment without runtime also even that is possible okay but that does not help much so what i'm trying to say is uh let me go back to the platform okay here is our platform so the point i'm trying to make is if i go to the atom management let's say i create a new environment and the environment name is test the classification is test do we have any runtime attached to it no right we don't have any runtime attached to it this is and kind of an orphan environment right so for prod we have one runtime with dev we have another runtime but with test we don't have any runtime so how do we go about it we go to the build tab this is the process we have been working on we'll say create package deployment okay i'm not writing any notes and all that stuff we'll package packaging is done and now from here on i'll take forward and i'll just do the deployment while doing the deployment i'm selecting the environment okay now the version is 2.0 right yesterday the one which we created was 1.0 review deploy so the deployment is done what i'm saying is the deployment is done so if you see the deployment has happened on the test environment but do we have any runtime attached to it no right no so this is a trick question which some interviewers might ask you right that we can do the deployment on the test environment or i mean any environment which does not have any runtime attached to it and the moment you attach the runtime to it okay so let's say uh, later on now what you do is you attach some runtime to it yeah the moment you will attach a runtime to it all those processes which were deployed to an environment will move to the or will be available or will be deployed on that run time as well so what i'm trying to say is let's say this is a dev environment and in this dev environment there is an atom with the name april batch dev atom and if i look if i look at the things here i can see some deployed processes right yes so now what's going to happen is uh, let's say i come here and i detach it right so this dev environment becomes an or orphan environment so with test what i'll do is i'll go and i'll attach this april batch dev atom now if you come here can you see that process is automatically available over here Yes. yes all right so these are the small things which you need to take care of or which you need to be aware of uh so any questions from anyone about this process so far uh, except error handling we did so many things we added so many shapes yeah. 
everything looks good then we move a code to the production and production is also called as a go live wherein you will have your actual application deployed and consumed or used by the actual users right so now what i'm trying to say is the connection details might change from one environment to another and not only connection details there are a lot of things which can change so for example there is a directory path which we thought is d employees blah 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 while we were doing the deployment or, or sorry while we were doing the development but later on for qa or prod that path might change right we would want that to be configurable so extension is as good as configuration or i would say whenever you would want anything any property okay whenever you would want any connection detail to be configurable when i say configurable i mean such that it can change from one environment to another right or if you want that that particular property or connection details to be uh to be such that it can be changed on the fly at the, on, at the run time so then in that case extensions are very very helpful so extension is the concept of making the connection details properties configurable such that it can be changed while moving the code from one environment to another so this concept will make or will facilitate you to make the connection details or the properties configurable so that it becomes easier for you to move your code from one environment to another also this is helpful in all such cases when you want certain properties to be to be editable at the run time without any redeployment of the code okay so what i'm trying to say you is that extension is a concept which allows you to make your properties connection details configurable and you can make those configurations at the run time right and you would not need any deployment right so if you remember we talked about the cross reference table right nobody asked me this question generally in my previous batches people have asked all this question so we made use of a cross reference table for where in for a1 maybe we selected some salary let's say 25000 or 35000 whatever it is i told the beauty of the cross reference table is that it can be changed on the fly yes the beauty of the cross reference table is it can be changed on the fly what does that mean that means the values which are there in the cross reference table are editable we can create new values we can update the existing values or we can delete the existing values on the fly but did we actually do that so far we did not do that right so extension is the concept which will make or which will help us to achieve that right so whenever you want an ability such that you are able to change the properties at the run time then you have to make use of concept of extensions so in different uh, in some other tools you might have heard of concept of properties file have you heard of anything like in java there is a concept of properties file so what happens is let's say you write some jdbc code to establish the connectivity with the database so when you write that code so you would want to connect with different database right so in that case what you typically do is you would write a generic code and certain properties which is going to change from one database to another you will keep those configurable in such a way that those values are read from a properties file and you can have a different property file for different databases or different environments but your code is not going to change so the point i'm trying to make is we de developed some code right so 
so typically once you are done with the development you would not want to make any changes in the code just because you want to move the code from one environment to another ideally that's not what we do right uh, so what you would want to do is you would want to use the same code when you move from one environment to another right so how do you so what i'm trying to say is first of all we should know how do we move from one environment to another and even before that what we need to understand is while we move from one environment to another we cannot uh, you know have the everything same in dev running in production because your connection details might change the values of certain properties might change so as a developer you need to make sure you identify all such property all such connection details and make them extensible with the help of extensions so if you make them extensible that means these value can be later on extended while we move our code from one environment to another or even within the same environment those values can be modified i'll explain you what i'm talking okay i i know many of you might not be able to absorb what i'm speaking but i'll explain you what i'm talking so let's talk about disk in disk we had some directory right so generally you know it is not mandatory that the directory will remain same <coughs> this directory might change from one environment to another and even when you will work in real time projects you will see this directory might be empty like this they will deliberately leave it empty i mean even this is a question in the interview sometimes it is asked how do you make sure that extensions are uh used by the processes so how do you make sure so the the only way we can make sure is just write some dummy connection details okay so if you want to impose your developers to make sure that they really use extensions then do not write actual connection details while establishing the connectivity or while configuring the connection just write some dummy details what do i mean by that so now in this case i go back to the disk do i have any directory path defined no right we don't have any directory path defined so how should we go about it if i'll try to run it should it fail okay i go here did it fail or not it did fail right you can see the control going to the catch and in the shape source data i can see the error message the error message is directory does not exist yes or no so that means something went wrong right because we didn't give the directory now how how do i make sure that extensions are used or how do i use extensions so if you observe this tab there is a there is a first option with the name options then extensions then add note then show navigation and then arrange so here we'll move on to the second one which is extensions can you see you have a you have different things which you can extend what all you can extend connection settings partner settings dynamic process property process property object definition data maps cross reference table and pgp these all things are extensible now when i talk about disk when i talk about disk i can extend what all can i extend directly, directly. and that's what we need to extend right now and if i go to the database there are a lot of things which i can extend right i can extend driver type i can extend username password host port db name there are a lot of other things which you can extend it's up to you right so and i will say okay so when i check these check boxes i am just ensuring that all these properties which have been selected under the extensions are extensible now and these can be changed on the fly so these are more like parameterized now 
and you can pass those parameters on the fly. So what do I mean by that is, so now when I go to the testing of this, I'll save this stuff. So you see, you get a message process gets saved, your extension gets saved. Now, if you see here, this is Atom, right? And here, do you see there is a, there is a drop down test extensions where you can set some path. Okay, so when I select disk, is it says use connection component value. That is the setting by default. But if you want to overwrite that, you can uncheck this and you can write employees. Okay, so what you're trying to do is there was certain property which was kind of extended, right? And you are doing a testing while doing the testing, you want to overwrite that property. Right now, we are not talking about the deployment and all. We are not talking about moving the code from one environment to another. Even when you're testing, all such values which were extended can be passed on under this section called as test extensions, right? Now, if you go to the cross-reference, do you see anything over here? No, but you do have a cross-reference table in your process. Why don't we see anything like there? Why, why does it say there are no extensible cross-reference tables? We didn't opt it like in extensions before only you should uh give the reason why it is not visible if we go to the extensions there was a section cross reference table we had to check this checkbox we had to check this checkbox if you guys remember we made use of one cross reference table to map the grade to the salaries of the employee now if i want to make it configurable i have to ensure that i check this checkbox now i do this i save all the stuff I will again come to the testing part of it. Test extensions. Okay, I will say the directory as the employees. Okay, I'll now jump onto the cross reference table. Can you see? You have an option to override. And now instead of 25,000, if like I want, let's say, want to make 30,000 or something else, I can do it, right? If other I want to make it, let's say, only 10,000 instead of one lakh, I can do it. But just understand one thing, whenever you're making these changes, you're not changing the values which are residing in the component configuration. I mean, you are not changing those values. You are just making sure that instead of using those values, which are configured under the connection configuration, you make use of the values which are passed at the extension level. Please do not assume that when I modified this value for other from 1 lakh to 10,000, this would have made a change in the cross reference table configuration. It would not do that. It is only the case that these value will be used for this specific execution. So let's say I run the test. It is saying extension saved. Now this time we don't see any error so far. The test is being executed. Okay, everything looks smooth. There are no errors as such. So if you see here, the control hasn't gone to the try catch branch. That means everything has worked absolutely fine. So I'll see the output over here, right after the map shape that what went as an input to the database connector. Can you see instead of one lakh now, the value which is going is 10,000. If you remember, for the employee 101, we were not sending the grade and we established some logic such that it picks up the value which is mapped for other, right? And for other earlier, the value was one lakh and now you made it 10,000. And this for this specific execution, the value which we can see is 10,000 instead of one lakh. And the reason why it is happening so is because while you tested this process, you configured certain value of extensions and that value is going to come into the picture. Now I just close it, come back. Okay, where can I find my cross-reference table? I can find under Component Explorer, isn't it? Can you see the value here is 10,000 or 1 lakh? It's still one lakh, right? So the point I, I wanted to convey is 
that whatever changes were made that is only applicable for that specific execution that's not going to change your actual components so for example for disk i i configured a directory like d employee that does not bring a change in your actual uh component configuration right any questions so far Uh, you uh, you told uh, that we can write dummy code. So where we can write um, dummy code? Like here, Let's by see. like when I said dummy means you can leave it empty or you can write like this. Because when you will write like this, yeah, literally write dummy connection. Yeah. Yeah, I mean dummy. It's not mandatory that you write dummy. Dummy means something. Which is not going to work unless we pass some values in the extensions. So that way, you are bound to use extensions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now there can be a interview question that how can we run the code in the build tab on a production environment without deploying the code? I'll repeat. The question is. how can you run a process on a production environment right without deploying the code so see when i want to run it on the production what i would want is i would want to understand that what are the connection details for the production database i want to understand what is the path and all and those things you can override in the extensions and you can run it isn't it so this extensions give you the flexibility to run the same process on different environments even from the build tab all right so now another mm -hmm. important mm -hmm. can you repeat like i'm not i'm saying let's say this is the code right now yeah. this the same code you have to run on let's say different environment okay yeah. so for different environment you will have a different atom now what i'm trying to say is this you can run this so let me show you like this okay so how many environments do we have we have one more right so now let's say let's say this is your test environment and this is your dev environment now on if you want to run the same code on test environment so what is going to change the only thing which can change is the disk connection values or the or actual database connection values right so you can override those values over here and the same code you can run on dev or qa or prod or any environment for that matter only by giving the connection different connection details correct yeah but the uh, atom uh, even you can select the atom na no? see of production environment yes you can select the atom of production environment you are right okay how okay there only in the drop down yeah. only yeah yeah hmm? yeah one more observation uh, you guys should make is i don't know like these are small things many people are not aware we go to the atom management How many atoms do we have? Yeah. Over. Ah. One, two, three, four. Ah, security action. Anna Garu, mute lo elali. Okay. <laughs> okay. So what I was saying is, uh, right now, how many you know, how many atoms do we see? We see one, two. and there is another one three right so we have three atoms we go back to the build tab guys these all are very very minute things please try to make a note of this how many atoms do you see over here four no two i was expecting this answer from someone four anyhow it's not four okay there is a section recently used and there is a section can you see Test environment and the atom, unattached atom. Also, you can see over here. You can see only two, right? Mm. But what about the atom cloud? Why can't you see that? 
So there was one more, no, this one, atom cloud. Why can't we see that? Answer for that is any atom which has a production classification cannot be used in the build tab. So I made certain statement sometime back and I'm myself contradicting that statement. So there is a caveat that you cannot use any atom which has the production classification. Please understand what I'm saying. I'm not saying any environment. I'm saying any atom which has a production classification cannot be used to test your processes in the build tab. So your atom cloud has which classification? Production classification, right? So this is not available for testing of the processes. But if your production environment was using a local atom, then you could find that atom available for testing even in the build tab. This is only exception with the atom clouds because the atom clouds with the production classifications are not available in the build tab for testing your processes. Is that clear? Uh, okay, but uh, how to use this atom? How to execute the process with production environment? Only you have to deploy and then you can use. You cannot do it from the build tab. So if you want to test anything, you'll have to do the deployment, proper deployment, the way we did yesterday, and then only you can test it. So I'll explain you. Okay, I'll explain you that part. But before that, I just want to observe you a few more things. So we configure different environments, dev, test, production, and all. So let me go to the test environment once again. You can see there is an environment name here. Then there is an environment ID. There's a classification. Then there are certain roles. Then there is attachment. Can you see there is another important thing called as environment extensions? Yeah. So yeah. it is saying environment extensions. So extensions are being maintained at the environment level, right? So this is tied to an environment. So this extensions is going to are going to change from environment to an environment, right? So for production, it will have its own environment extensions. For dev, it will have its own environment extensions. So what I'm trying to say is. So this environment extensions, as the name suggests, these are tied to an environment. Now I go to the test and I click on environment extensions. What, what does it say? There are no extensible processes deployed to this environment. Do we have anything deployed to this environment? Yes, we do have. But then there is not a single process which has even a single of the properties extended so that that's why it gave us a pop up with a error message. Now, what do we do is in the extensions, did we extend certain properties for disk for cross reference table and all right? I will create a package component again. So whenever you have to do a redeployment with some new changes, you have to create a package and then do a redeployment. So I'll say this is this includes enablement of extensions. Please make sure whenever you do deployment, right, you make these kind of notes. So the, when you're writing these notes, people will feel that you have worked in real time, right? Generally, people who will fake their experience will avoid these kind of small things. And but these things will have a high significance when you're working for enterprise because there will be a lot of people working in parallel. So these notes become important. You won't remember what you did last, I mean, three months back, but then these notes will help you to understand that which individual version of the process corresponds to which particular fix, right? So this includes enablement of extensions. I'll package. So packaging is done. One way is I can continue my deployment from here. Or else, what is the other way? If I lay, let's say I want to just close it, what is the other way to continue my deployment? Uh, you can the process reflecting. Have to click on manage. We have to click on deploy. Because okay, 
deploy and a deploy you have package components right can you see your package go to this gear icon deploy and let's say you want to deploy on test itself deploy deployment is done now i'll go to the atom management so now you have to understand in the test you will have the only you cannot have two versions same two versions of the process running at the same time right so now the one which we will have is the version number latest that is 3.0 right so i will come to the environment and i'll go to the environment extensions now do you see that warning is not available anymore yes environment environment extensions now here there is a process level filter how many process do, processes do we have as of now only one right then in this process you can override the value of disk you can override the value of database okay you will see only those options which were extended in the build tab right now if you go to the cross reference table do you see the option to override yes so you can come here and let's say you check this check box override right so for example you feel that this value should not be there or you want to add another value you can do all those stuff over here you can do all this over here right and whenever you make these changes here you will see the audit logs also right now you don't see any audit logs because nothing has been changed so far i'll say okay so when i'll say okay you will get this pop up extension saved another important thing is you go to this uh atom and here there will be an option extension last updated i have personally seen uh, there have been incidents when we were doing the go live for some project and you would see that extensions were not getting updated sometimes it happens so you can restart your atom you can detach your atom and can try to attach again but you have to make sure that your extensions get updated over here yeah extensions got updated now what do we do guys uh, we'll go back to the environment extensions can you see there is an audit log date time audit log type is extensions action is edit what is a new value so you can see here this is the complete xml which defines the stuff that you are trying to override can you see here there is a cross reference rules and 60000 this is the new value you are trying to pass this is a certification question where can you find the audit logs audit logs are only available when you override the extensions or when you modify the extension values yes now in this case what exactly did we override did we override anything yes we we had overridden the cross reference table wherein we added a new grade isn't it so this way you can do the changes in the values on the same environment and even when you move from one environment to another so let's say you go back your, to your deployments so now the question is right now my code is deployed on test right and i want this code to be moved to production how should we do it should we go to the build tab and deploy on production once again ideally that is not the correct way the correct way is you should always promote your code so once you deployed your code on dev from there on it should be always promotion promotion means the same version should go to qa the same version should go to prod you cannot afford to go back to the build tab and deploy on test the way we did just now that is the wrong approach okay so ideally what you should do is now you have deployed on test you found that everything works fine you go to this gear icon and then there is an option deploy to different environment and let's say i want to deploy to prod 
okay so you will give the message this is the process which has extensions enabled all that stuff blah 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 okay so now the code has been moved to prod from test and it is the same packaged component right it is also 3.0 it is also 3.0 right but what would have happened if i would have gone to the build tab and try to do the deployment it would have created a new package component isn't it so you should always promote the code in this way right once you feel that it is working fine you come to this gear icon deploy to different environments and you can promote your code do not go back to the build tab so there also you will get an option to do the deployment straight away but then that will auto increment the version which is not the right way you should have same version of the code running across the environments right just to make sure that you have the integrity established any doubt so far so now what we'll do is we'll go back to the atom management we'll go to prod we'll go to the pro environment extensions now what do you see will we be seeing that new grade which we added in the environment extensions over here for prod no i guess so we don't see it right because those extensions were specific to that environment right now for this environment if you want to make any changes you can do it over here right and that's how you can you can make your process to run with the different connection details right so for example now my production connection details would be different right so i can go here i can select oracle or maybe this one if you want to override you override or you leave it as is maybe you want to override the username you want to override the password host port database name all these things you might want to override right so you can just uncheck this and you can pass those details if you do not uncheck this then this is going to take the one which is residing in your process right which were given during the process configuration itself and please understand one thing one important thing whatever extensions you are setting over here right whatever extensions you are setting over here that is confined to the build tab only that is applicable only for the testing of the process so some people might feel that you know i had given some extension value over here that should automatically come in the environment extensions once i deploy the process that's not going to happen these values which you are using are restricted to the test mode these are not going to get carried forward at the time of deployment this is a very very important concept you need to make sure that you understand it well very easy thing but still you should have a good idea right you should not get confused about it any questions so far from anyone all right so we'll go to the process reporting right if you remember yesterday we talked little bit about process reporting give me a moment guys i'll just plug in the charging in my laptop all right can you guys hear me Yes. Okay. Okay. Can can you see some of the executions which has been happening? We we scheduled some process yesterday, and it is still running. Yeah. So so if you see under executions, it is there are different filters. Past hour, past twenty four hours. So in past twenty four hours, there have been a lot of executions which have got kicked off, isn't it? Yes. so this is going to happen in real time also you will have a lot of instances and now let's say someone came to you and said that 
okay boss uh, this particular order id or this particular employee id is not visible in the database what should we do i mean maybe a ticket comes to you and uh, they want you to basically help them out that what went wrong over here so how do you take care of that so in that case maybe something got errored out in your process you might have received some notification right an alert which has the execution id so what you'll do is you will go to add filter you will you can filter on the basis of atom you can filter on the basis of process you can filter on the basis of execution id also you can go here and you can just populate that execution id over here and you will get only that specific process so i'll just show you an example so i'll take one of these executions so so the execution id is going to be same or different for all these different executions different this is going to change right because execution id is unique per execution so if you if i'll i'll pick up any random execution i'll go here and there is an option called as view extended information right when you get into this can you see there are some there is some uh, metadata which is about execution id process id atom id and deployment id i'll pick up this execution id randomly okay i'm just picking it randomly ideally you should design your error handling in such a way that you get these execution ids either logged into the database along with the error message or it gets uh, you know parceled as a part of the email alert which is sent to the team now let's say by by some means you got this kind of execution id okay you know that the issue is with the execution which has an execution id is equal to this right so what you will do is you will come here maybe you can say the may, you know that this issue must have happened maybe in last 7 days right you will go and add a filter execution id and you will populate that value and you will hit apply so when you hit apply can you observe that you are now pointing to that specific execution so now out of thousands of executions which have happened you want to point to the specific execution which actually has an issue and how do you do that see one way is you know the time stamp and all that stuff right but the easiest way is you have the execution id and you can point right to that specific execution which has an issue now once you know that there is an issue you can go to the logs so in the logs you can observe right how has been the process execution you can see the process state also this process state will give you the complete information that which all shapes got executed right not only that you can see the documents also right so this way this execution id will play a very vital role in you know pointing to that execution specific execution which went wrong or which has an issue are you guys following me i mean do you really understand the significance of execution id why, why we were emphasizing on execution id to be there as a part of that error message or error uh, you know payload <laughs> any questions from anyone so we started with a build we configured certain shapes and components we tested them out we enhanced the logic we did multiple round of testing once we felt that everything looks in place we went ahead and carried out the deployment so even even to do the deployment we this is a two step process first package your process once the packaging is done then you go ahead and deploy your process so once you deploy your process you can uh, you can kind of you know schedule your process right so you will schedule your process uh, where do we schedule it under atom management go to the deployed process and you can schedule it right now you can go here you can go on edit schedules and here you can de define the schedule if you feel the scheduler needs to be stopped you can stop schedule 
right? And then there is a process reporting tab. This process reporting tab will help you to see the status of all the executions. Then we talked about extensions. Extensions make basically helps you to make certain properties configurable so that the values can be changed at the fly, right? In the same environment or across different environments, these extensions are maintained per environment level. You can override the connection details, dynamic process properties, process properties, cross-reference tables, and many other things. And these will make sure that your deployments and the promotion of the code from one environment to another is smooth. You also understood that when we are having the code, let's say in test, you should not go back to the build tab and redeploy the code to the another environment. Rather, you should promote the same version of the code from one environment to another. Another important thing. Um, just hold on, okay? Give me a moment. Yeah, yeah. Another important feature you have is, let's say you are on test or maybe prod. Now you feel the code which you moved is not working. It has some issues. Then there is an option called as rollback, okay? Now it does not give you any option to roll back because this is the only version you deployed on prod. But let's say if you were following all the standards, maybe wherein you must have, you know, deployed version 1.0 first, then 2.0, then 3.0, then it would have given you option to choose the older version to which you would point to which you would want to point back. Right. So when I go here, I do a rollback. I don't see any options because this is the only version which is deployed to prod. Now let's say this is 1.0 and I'll say deploy to different environment and I'll choose prod for, I'm just showing it for an example. Now on prod, we have the version 1.0, right? Now you feel 1.0 is the wrong version, right? This is not working as expected. You go here, you go to rollback. So when you say it does not do a rollback automatically, you have to manually do it and you have to select the version to which you would want to point back. So I, I feel that I would want to point back to 3.0. It's done. So I'm back on 3.0. Yeah. Yeah, Priyanka, you were saying something. How can we configure uh, like uh, in ex extension and uh, um, process uh, dynamic process properties? I'll show you that. Okay. And uh, ro uh, for rollback, uh, in, in, means uh, we can like in any environment we can roll back. Yes. In any environment, you can do a rollback. Okay. So you will have an option here. You will have an option here. But only uh, if it has uh, more than one version, uh, rollback option should be there, right? Yeah, I mean, if, yeah, see, if you, let's say, deployed only one version of the code, then what yeah. it would roll back to. For yeah. rollback to happen, it should have some history, right? That to which previous yeah. version you want to do a rollback. Yeah, and if you have one version deployed to prod and same version is deployed to test, then also we can roll back. Yes, that's true, right? Okay. So we have 3.0 okay. here, 3.0. So now once this 3.0 is deployed to both the environments, right? So these are kind of mutually exclusive. These environments are mutually exclusive. So let's say you go here and you do a rollback to 1.0. So now that 1.0 rollback is only applicable for prod, your test remains intact. Okay. Okay. These all are important things to know guys. Uh, you know, you might need to give it a try. Uh, like I am doing these all things day in and out. So you, I would recommend you that you explore all these options, try to deploy your process, try to schedule your process, Try to see how that rollback is working. Once you see it yourself, once you observe things working for you, you, you will get more confidence. And I think you will be better placed because me doing it and you just observing it is definitely helpful to a certain extent. And post that you have to 
try it on your own and observe things and that's where you get, start getting stuck and you know basically you will come up with more questions also all right so i think we'll we'll just take a pause over here uh, i don't want the session to be overwhelming uh, it's just a weekend i just wanted to make sure that we meet since we missed few sessions last week uh, and then we'll catch up on monday we'll not, we we are not going to meet tomorrow so tomorrow will be enough we will meet on monday and we'll continue from here as uh, sushmita if you want to stay back for 2 minutes uh, i just want to talk to you yes sir mm -hmm.